Okay. <coughs> So find a seat and um, find a seat that's comfortable for you. I can't remember if we've talked in this class about the word asana, but the word asana you will find is at the end of every pose name. And the reason for that is because asana means to take your seat. And the word in there that is the most important is the word your. And um, there can be so much pressure in yoga, especially when you're in class watching other people to see how they're doing it. Are they better than me? Are they worse than me? Blah, 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 blah. And um, it's just a reminder that this is your seat. And sometimes it takes a while to find your seat. So we, we think sometimes, especially in a class that's short like this, like we've just got to jump in and get in and be comfortable. But feel free to move around a little bit. Like sometimes I'll move my sitting bones back and apart a couple times as my body settles into this posture and sometimes I'll just do a little wiggle around my ribs if they're sticky or tight and just wriggle my shoulders. So you just take a moment to settle in and take deep breaths so that you can, when you come to stillness, it feels good. It doesn't feel like, oh, I want to get out of this pose. So there we are. And as you're in this pose, we'll start our first pranayama, which today is really simple, but really great because it brings us into the present moment and lets us focus. And sometimes when we're moving between life and yoga, there's the, the brain takes sort of a little bit of a lag time to come in to the body. So we're gonna bring it in a little quicker. So it's a really simple inhale for eight counts. So you inhale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and exhale eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight and exhaling eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Continue that on your own as I give you further instruction. So I like to think of the breath like a swing. So if you can remember being on a swing when you were little and the top of the swing, there's a little suspension. And at the bottom of the swing, there's a little suspension. And so I want your breath to be like that, this really sweet, almost like a swinging action where you lengthen as you inhale and as you exhale, you settle and you feel your body dropping down. And there's another little suspension and you begin to inhale again. And the eyes move to the third eye point and they get sort of heavy there like heavy towards the back of the body. And the attempt is not only to lengthen the breath into that eight counts, which sometimes can feel so long, but it's also to make it sweeter and softer. And then finally, the breath is where we learn that there's permeability between myself and the outside. And let that sink in for a little bit. There's a permeability between myself and what's outside of myself. So in yoga, we say that the inhale is accepting the bigger breath, the breath of the universe, taking it in, in that permeability into the center line of the body. And then as you exhale, it's like you're sending your breath out between that permeable boundary and to the world. So that it's moving us from this sense of separateness, which is so easy to get in times like this, and moves us into a sense of connecting, that our energy is constantly moving from the outside in and from the inside out. 
and that there's a permeable membrane between us and the world that actually in yogic philosophy doesn't really even exist. That we exist as all things and all things exist as us. We're just this one little shape and form of the greater whole. <clears throat> Let's take a couple more. Can you imagine too that you can take in all that is healthy and good and life-giving and full and you can release the same. So it's this beautiful dynamic conversation of body, mind, and spirit. And now we'll let the breath just settle out on the exhale as our arms drop down to the side. And as we inhale the next time, the arms float overhead. They come to prayer. They stretch a little bit on that suspension. And then they exhale, the hands exhale through prayer down the middle line of the body all the way to the lap and then they release out. That's the exhale. Another little suspension before we inhale and sweep. And you can take this into as long counts as you would like or short if that feels better to you. So sometimes if we need to just get really focused, we slow it down. And sometimes if we need to pull in more energy, we speed it up and take more of a, you know, a really drawing in deeply breath. So find your way so that your your program, I was going to say, your, <laughs> we'll call this your program, your yoga becomes custom designed for you. And that will be sort of our theme today as we realize that all parts of the practice are designed with you in mind. Keep going. So as you do the practice, if you need to shift and change something and adjust, feel free. We're going to finish this one up as you're ready with hands in prayer and make an offering towards our health and that of the entire planet. And we'll bow and make that our offering today. Come on up. We'll just release our hands and open our eyes. So the very first pose or action we're gonna be doing today is for knees. So we're gonna to come to the very edge of our sticky mat. So for you, that might mean that you're on the short edge. Either way that you are, I'm hoping you have room in front of you for your legs on the floor. It can be a carpet or a rug. You can also just fold your, your blank ear up, mat back for a moment. So you're gonna bend one leg. Let's all do our right leg together. And the right hand is going to go right on the outer shin. So kind of where it's meaty there, that cap, that side of the cap. The left hand is going to come to the inner thigh. And it's a little awkward, but I want you to have it close to your torso as you can. And you're going to press those two hands isometrically together. What this does is it brings the bones into good alignment. And then you start to stripe the heel forward on the carpet or floor. And you can let your body hinge with it. And remember, the hands are pressing fairly firmly. And this comes from a Feldenkrais exercise. And it seems strange. It doesn't seem like it could do anything. But when my knee gets a little kittywampus, I always feel that it's slightly, it's not tracking very well. And so when I do this, I'm just teaching the bones where they need to be to track properly as if I'm taking that knee right over the second toe. And if you follow that with your mind's eye, you'll see that that's happening. And this is patterning and giving you some kinesthetic feedback for that action that we want. In all yoga poses, we strive to have the shin moving towards the midline. There's actually some muscles there called peroneals. They've changed the name lately. Now I've forgotten what it is. There's a preferred name, but the old name is the Peroneal Brothers. There's two of them. And their action is to push the shin towards the midline. And then there's your inner thigh muscle. You're probably starting to ache, and so I'm trying to distract you. There's an inner thigh muscle that's supposed to action towards the outside. 
Sometimes those get reversed and that causes knee pain. Okay, good. If you're aching, super good. Release it down. Take your hands behind you. You can be on tippy fingers and just shake that. Actually, let's just shake both legs out. Why not? And take a cleansing breath. So that's our little knee warm up. Let's try it on second side. So bending your left leg. Remember the same hand as leg goes to the shin. And the opposite hand comes to the thigh as close to the torso as you can comfortably be. The toes lift up and we start to stripe. And again, we're just patterning the bones. And when we pattern the bones, the muscles then can start to regroup. The ones that are too tight can start to loosen. The ones that are maybe not tight enough are starting to tighten. And we just give our body that feedback. And you watch that knee and that toe kind of just tractioning well over each other. Make sure that you let your body just kind of hinge forward and back so you don't cause too much stress in that upper body. We've got a couple more. Let's go for four more. You want to feel a little achiness coming into the leg. It just means something is working. Beautiful. One more. Are you breathing? Good. And release. Take your fingertips behind you on the floor and shake the legs out. Okay, now you're going to reach for a block or something that you can place underneath your thigh. It could be a rolled up blanket. <clears throat> so I have my block about midway on my thigh between knee and hip. I'm going to brace myself with my fingers behind me and I'm going to straighten that leg. My foot is flexed. And I'm going to see, and I'm going to look, use my eyes as well as my kinesthetic uh, messaging system. I'm going to try to get that quadricep. That's the muscle that fall, goes from the top of the knee to the top of the hip, all the way up in there. And, <clears throat> and we want that quadricep to be super strong so that it supports the knee. And you want to really try to draw it. Maybe you can even take your fingers and try to tap it a little bit and see if you can draw that kneecap up towards the hip flexor. So you're really activating that. You might even find that you feel like you're plugging that thigh bone into its socket. Last breath. And then release that. Take your other foot. I like to take my Achilles in between my first two feet, but that's not comfortable for everybody. So you could wait. You could just put your foot on top of your ankle. You're going to use that as a weight. So now we're going to start to straighten that bottom leg against the resistance of the top leg. And you're going to use what you learned in that tracking exercise to make sure that the knee and the second toes are really tracking well here. And as you resist the straightening, you should start to feel some nice um, muscle action on that quadricep. So you wanna go until it burns a little bit, until you feel it really firing up. And you're breathing steadily because you're waking up some deep muscles there. A couple more, almost there. Whoa, I'm getting a lot of aching. This is so good, beautiful. Release, release the block, the blanket, whatever, and just shake that leg out. Take a cleansing breath. <clears throat> so let's try that same thing second side. So take a block, a blanket roll, something. You, you want to be up kind of high, but you, you'll just have to adjust with what you got. And you're going to straighten that leg. And again, you're going to try to bring the kneecap up into the hip socket. So it feels like it's plugging in, which is good for you anyways. This is the plug-in we talk about sometimes in yoga. And you can you know, kind of tap that muscle and see if there's any way you could bring it a little bit tighter onto the bone. And you're just breathing here, touching base with some body parts. Last breath for this one. Beautiful, release it down. Take your other leg and make your weight, however that works best for you. And then you're going to start to straighten and bend. Again, remember your tracking work and make sure that that knee and the second toe get to know each other in a really healthy tracking way because this is where we keep the knee really safe. If it tracks too far to the pinky toe or the big toe, it sets, sets us up for 
danger later. And once you, you kind of um, imprint this kind of idea and action, the body becomes more sensitive to it when you're in standing poses because those are the most important. So see where you feel achy. I'm actually noticing that on this side, I'm feeling achy in my hamstrings. So I like the diagnostics of this also to know where, where is it that has to fire that's weak for my body. But you're trying to get that quadricep to strengthen to one more, you can do it. Mm -mm -mm. And release and take that block away and just shake it out. And here's one more for the knees. So you're gonna take your blanket. So you start with the pillow fold and you're gonna roll that into your burrito roll. It's a little awkward this pose to get into. I like to have a block handy. So I'm gonna place on the top of my mat. I'm gonna come around into hands and knees or just sitting on the shins actually. And I'm gonna take that burrito roll. Here's where it gets a little challenging. You take that burrito roll, you rock forward so that your head's on the block. So it can be kind of high if you need it. If you make a little kickstand there for your head, you bring that burrito roll in and under your uh, knee, behind your knees. So they're as tight, so it's as tight in to the knees as you can. And then you're gonna sit on back. And the nice thing about having a block there is you can manage how far you sit back. So what's important here is that your legs are parallel to each other and your feet are reaching straight back. So the toes aren't coming in like child's pose, but that all 10 toes are stretching to the wall behind you. And just take a moment to notice what you feel. So I'm noticing, for instance, on my right calf, my right calf is super tight. And so I'm feeling this all in right calf. You might feel that somewhere else. And what this does is it gaps the knee. And what I mean by that is sometimes the, the knee joint, it just gets too tight in there. All the muscles get tight and gummy. And these three exercises help to, well, this one especially helps to open up that, the knee joint, because like, it works like a seesaw or a lever. Um, and then those other two tractions. So these three exercises, if you have knee pain, if you do that, daily or even every other day, I would guess that in a week, you would feel amazing amounts of relief. So you may be dying here, I hope you're not. I want you to finish class with me, but I want you to try to be here for about another 15 seconds. So keep breathing, prop yourself as you need to. You don't wanna be in excruciating pain, of course, but you might feel some tenderness and some challenge here. Let's take two more big deep breaths. See how much you can settle into the pose. Beautiful, release that out and come on up. We're gonna go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we've got this burrito roll, why not? And we've got a block handy. So you're gonna keep that burrito roll. You might have to retighten it if it got a little loose. You're gonna place it towards the top of your mat and we'll do our side opening postures here. So take your block, you're gonna lay your left rib cage onto that bolster and you'll take the block and tuck it in between your shoulder and your ear. I have my arms just straight out. Your top leg, which is my right leg, is gonna go straight out so that it's parallel to the floor. And I'm just gonna work some of the structures on the side of the leg that work towards stabilizing, not only stabilizing back, but stabilizing knee. So you're gonna start with just little pulsations. It doesn't have to be a lot. You're just kind of pulsing. And you wanna imagine that you're moving through a little bit of thick air. So it's not just like a mindless boop, 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 but that you're actually like, you know, pressing down and up on something. And you're breathing, of course. And just to be a little more mindful, and sometimes I'll use a kickstand here with my right arm, by the way, but just to be a little more mindful, I wanna bring my abdominals back so that my, low, my lumbar spine isn't left to its own devices. It's got some support. Okay, now I'm gonna turn, pigeon toe my toe down and touch the earth. And then I'm gonna turn it up and open it to the sky. 
and then I'm going to turn it down and I want to really get into that place of the hip. So I'm really trying to work those muscles and just always notice, remember our little talk earlier about asana, you really pay attention to how this feels in your body. If for some reason you're getting the message, mm, nah, then listen to that. Lying on this bolster might be good enough for you. And a couple more. Okay, you're gonna finish up with the, the toe pointing down and you're just gonna lift that leg until you get, you can't lift anymore. And then again, you just do little teeny pulses. Oh, and I say that in a high voice because, oh, this is a good work. Here, we're strengthening the, 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 the muscle fibers around the glutes, but also you're getting a little IT band action. Beautiful, release that and just shake it out. You can just kick it out. And then the last one on this side is we bend the knees and the big toes are touching and the inner heels are touching on both feet. And now again, as if you're moving through peanut butter, they stay together, those inner uh, big toes and inner heels, and you just open the knee to the sky. And again, you listen to your body, you take it into its therapeutic range where you feel like you're getting some nice action around that hip, but not so much that you're causing pain. And you always fill in the back body with your abdominals. We've got three more. Inhaling and exhaling. And last one. And since we have so many lymph nodes in the legs, this is all really good for us anyways. We're gonna roll onto our bellies and scoot up a little bit so that that burrito roll is right into the soft spot of the belly. So we should feel pretty supported. Like there shouldn't feel back pinching. And if there is, you might wanna go just a teeny bit lower. And then the feet, they press down on the floor and try to stretch away from you. Your forearms press down and forward as you lengthen the crown and try to melt the heart. And we've got 10 breaths here to pump the front of the um, discs with breath and fluid and space. So you keep those forearms active as well as the legs. And you try to breathe a little bit of space through collarbones, try not to just sag on the hip, on the, excuse me, on the shoulders, but keep that little action around the inner thighs, which is sort of like squeezing the base of a tube of toothpaste so that you feel that support coming all the way up the body. Let's go for two more breaths. Beautiful, you're just gonna lay yourself down slowly with the arms going straight out in front of you like downward facing dog, but your forehead's gonna hit on the floor. And just a couple more breaths there, feeling the burrito roll on your belly so that it kind of inflates the low back. You've got one more breath there. And then from there, you just bring your hands by your chest and you press up through hands and knees to tabletop so that we can go on second side. Or you could just roll over actually. I had to switch sides so that I could face the camera. Place the um, right rib cage on that burrito roll and bring that block in between your shoulder and your arm. The other hand goes kickstand. And we just breathe here for a moment, feeling that stretch through the side. It's like the, the burrito roll just imprints the ribs in. And then you take your top leg and stretch it out long. And you just do fill in the back body with your abdominals and start to do little pulsations. You're just strength, strengthening all those structures around the knee, giving it what it needs to stay strong. The belly is lifting in and up. All right, and then you're gonna turn the toes, pigeon toes, and tap that toe down, and then turn them out and lift up, and then turn it down and keep going. So you turn it in and out, and you wanna try to find how there's muscles 
around the very top of the thigh that work here. And create strength and mindful action in that leg. And you're breathing steadily and your belly is drawing in and up. We're gonna finish with the toes pointing down. We'll lift up as high as is comfortable and just do little pulsations to get gluteus minim minimus and medius and also um, the muscle fibers that are around the IT band. A couple more breaths. And release and shake it out. Bring the big toes touching and the inner heels touching. Knees are together. And like you're moving through thick air, you open and you close. And you open. We go for 10 here and close. And you're breathing. Inhale and exhale. And even if we're going for 10, but maybe seven's good enough for you, then that's where you stop. I think we're at nine, if I'm not mistaken. If you think we're only at eight, you can always do one more. <laughs> Shake it out. We're going to uh, turn towards our burrito roll so that our forearms are on the mat. You're gonna step up onto your feet for forearm plank. So I am pressing forearms down into the floor and slightly forward tractioning. The knees are soft and I'm pushing through my strong legs and my belly, ribs, and sternum are lifting off the floor. Here's some really good core work for us today. Two more breaths. Really working to lift belly, ribs, and sternum away from floor, and then release down. And press back or walk yourself back to child's pose. Big toes touching, knees wide and apart. And if you wanna bring that burrito roll back and rest your forehead on it, it feels really good. Then the hands can stretch out like downward facing dog on tippy fingers and you just press down and pull back slightly with the fingers to plug those arm bones into their sockets and to lift up the head of the arm bones towards the sky. One more breath. And from here, we come forward onto our forearms again. We stretch our legs straight out like we're gonna do forearm plank, which we are going to start. Now listen carefully, hands press down, or forearms press down and forward. Make sure the neck is in line with your spine. The belly is active. You're gonna turn the right foot to the left so you're standing on the outside of your right foot. And you can keep that there. You can either weight bear on your right forearm or kickstand on the right forearm and just try to turn until you can stack your left leg. And what this does is it just activates the undersides of the ribs to draw together. If it feels good to you, you can try taking your other arm into the sky. If that's too much for your shoulder, don't do it. And then you're gonna come back to center all the way, it pra um, practicing your forearm plank, and then you turn your left foot to the right. So you're standing on the outside and you can kickstand the right hand and stack the left and just see if you can feel those underside ribs starting to activate. And then from there, you either stay there or you try to open the top arm and use your abdominals to fill in the back body. Beautiful. And then come on back down, walk your knees in till your knees touch the burrito roll. You're gonna grab that burrito roll so it kind of slightly unrolls Easier said than done there, there we go. So you have the folded edge, you take that into your lap. I call this an omega shape. It's kind of like you're just trying to form it into the lap 
and then you take your knees out wide so your big toes are touching press down on that little that little roll you just have one little roll there press down lift up and over and see if you can take forehead to the floor if you can't a block is really good here and what this does is it stretches the places of the low back but that little roll also works to ground the hips or ground the thigh bones so that they create space between the belly and the thighs and get the thigh bones into the backs of the sockets. Super healthy place for them to be. Two more breaths. We got those, remember those eight count breaths? This is where you can really utilize those. Beautiful. From here, you plant your hands. Come on up to sitting. We'll take these sweet blankets, give them a little bit of thanks and gratitude for all their support, and we come to hands and knees. Toes are tucked under for cow. Inhaling, looking up. Toes are flat for cat. We push our hands down and forward and use all those abdominals to fill in that back body, even behind the shoulder blades. Tuck the toes under and find your cow. And exhale and tuck the toes. Press the hands down and forward. Use your abdominals. Pull them in and up. And then from here, we're going to Swing the hips into an elliptical shape. So you're just turning the hips in a circle and take your time. Get super mindful, slow, breathy with it so that you really feel where you are sticky and where it's hard to make that elliptical shape with your hips. Don't worry too much about what's happening with arms and neck. Just really get into the shaping of those hips. You'll start to notice where the body doesn't like to move as readily and you just gently nudge it into those actions. Let's go the other way. Big deep breaths in and out. And release that. Take your hands, walk them forward, tippy fingers, tuck your toes, keep the hips right over the knees and start to reach forward as if to drop your heart to the floor. Now this can be hard on your shoulders if you also drop the armpits to the floor. So press the fingers down and as if you had a giant leaf blower blowing into your armpits, blow your armpits up to the sky, but try to melt the, the, the back of the shoulder blades. So those two actions are important. Last breath. And then sit on back. We'll sit back in Vajrasana, sitting back on our heels. Just rest your hands in your lap and take a cleansing breath. Beautiful. We'll get into our legs a little bit. We've done a lot of work for our knee support. So just take a moment and notice. Do you notice how, how much structure you feel in your legs now? That's super good for us to know where our legs are in space because our legs are so key with how they support us in movement. So from here, we'll come up slightly. You can use your left hand. You can brace yourself with your right. And we're just gonna swing that leg through to a lunge. The back toes can tuck under. We're gonna walk up onto our front leg and we're gonna press our hands down on the upper knee and push forward bracing so that it automatically pulls the abdominals back towards the body. Now notice if your right thigh bone likes to move towards the front of the socket. If it does, relax it back. It's just a habit, that's all. And we wanna create the musculature that keeps it moving back. Now with that in place, drop your hands down and use your legs to press the heart up to the sky. From there, we inflate the arms, swing them up overhead, grab the right wrist, I'm sorry, grab the left wrist with your right hand and pull over to the right. 
and then inhale, come up and switch sides. Grab the left wrist, but remember that thigh bone, that right thigh bone. Keep drawing it back towards the back heel as you stretch over to the side. Beautiful, release that, but bring your left elbow to your left knee. And maybe that's enough for you. So if it is, just pause there. If you want a little bit more, you adjust it, and then you stack your hands. You do a little twist. You gotta, you gotta act against the twist to squeeze the legs together right around the belly. Good, and then release that. Rock a little bit forward and back. So you can lift the front toes and then you just rock it forward and back. Oh, we're waking up that left side of the body, that left leg. Stretching out that hamstring a little bit. This is a lot of knee work. So if knees are tender, I should have given you this before. It's okay to be on a folded blanket for all of this. Okay, let's go ahead and swing. And again, you can use your hand if you need to, to swing that leg back and to sit back in Vajrasana and rest your hands in your lap and just notice what's happening left and right. Here we go, second side. So you're gonna stack onto hands and knees. Left hand can be on the floor. Right hand can grab the leg and swing it through to a lunge. You're gonna tuck the back toes and walk up onto that front thigh. Press the hands on the upper knee there, down and forward to activate back your abdominals. And then just take a moment to notice this back thigh it likes to ride forward into the joint. So you're literally gonna pull it back so that it almost, the sitting bone is almost craving the back heel or like there's a little bungee cord attaching the two. And then the hands can drip down and we use the strength of our legs to lift the heart. If it feels good, fly your arms up overhead, grab your right wrist, exhale, bow to the left. And then inhale up, a little hard with balance. So you gotta find those inner thighs and squeeze them a bit. Inhale, come up. You'll bring that left elbow to the left knee and you can just pause there and stay there. The work here is to squeeze the inner thighs together around the, the, the belly and you'll feel it lift and tone. If it feels good to you, stack your hands one on top of the other and find this sweet little twist, but find, make the legs active. They're gonna make this much more stable so that the back can be free to twist. And release that. You'll step your right leg back, but um, I'm sorry, you're not gonna step your right leg back. You're gonna move back and forth. So the heel comes up as you move back and you come into your lunge. And you just go back and forth like that to the best of your ability. And we're squeezing the places of the hips behind the knees, doing a lot for lymphatic movement and flow. Let's do two more. Really waking up those legs so they support you for the rest of your days. And now swing that leg back as best you can. Sit back, Vajrasana, breathe deeply and maybe find your eight count breath again for a couple rounds. Beautiful, rock forward to hands and knees. We're gonna find our downward facing dog. If you love having some support, grab a block underneath your forehead. If you just wanna be in the dog, you can do that. The toes are tucked under. This is an inversion, so it's nice to be able to stay a little longer and have the head supported. So we move forward into cow tilt, sitting bones back and apart, and then we press down into dog. And having, again, the bl block or something underneath our forehead. If that doesn't work for you, no worries. Just soften the knees and the elbows so they're not locked out. And just imagine everything pouring from the high point down to the low point. 
So you just cause this lymphatic flowing of energy into its opposite directions. I've been so struck by the importance of breathing again. I get struck occasionally and remember, and then I forget for a while, but once again, as we talk about this virus, we are masked a lot. And um, masking isn't really all that good for us personally in terms of our own oxygen flow and our own exposure to, to what we're trying to expel. So our lungs are a big part of our detoxifying system. So it's really, really great when we have an opportunity to breathe really deeply without those masks and to have them on as infrequently as we need to, to still stay safe and keep others safe. So one good thing about being home or in gardens or out for nature walks, big deep breaths in, a big full breath out. One more here. Beautiful. You're going to walk your feet, come to tippy toes and walk your feet forward towards the front of the mat. Bend your knees deeply, place your elbows there, look forward, inhale, come up to standing. Bring your hands to your chest and exhale, push away and come to Utkatasana. Inhale like you're gathering up into your heart and exhale like you're pushing away. And now for the next few, make this your own. So gather what you need and push away what you don't. A good one is gathering in love and pushing away fear. Whatever works for you though, just take this moment to let this practice be one that serves you. So you get this whole body mind work going, the abdominals are strengthening, the legs are strengthening. We've got two more pushing what you don't want, pulling in what you do want. Last one. And we'll just stand in Tadasana for a moment, hands flowing down, feeling all of our feet on the mat. Big deep breath. Here's our eight counts again. Inhaling. And exhaling a little bit harder because we're trying to breathe more rapidly. I want you to try to slow it down as quickly as you can. On the last one, let your arms fly overhead with your long eight count inhale. Stay there for a few more breaths. You can add a little bit of wrist circle here. Again, another one that we're reversing the flow of gravity. Beautiful. From here, you're just going to release down as best you can. Come down onto the floor. Keep your block. And we're just going to do the reverse of what we just did. So we're going to place the block underneath our hips or underneath our sacrum and on the backs of our hips and take our legs up into the sky. Arms can be out in T, they can be out in cactus, or they can be straight overhead. Yogi's choice. We're going we're gonna to do ankle circles here. And I want you to activate the toes. So don't let them just go along for the ride but have them be a part of the articulation of your feet. Our beautiful feet that carry us all 26 bones in each foot. Amazing, because they're small little bones. They carry our bodies around. Let's go the other way. Really articulating those toes. Bring them to a close. Let your, let your ankles stack right over your hips so that you're neither stretching your hamstrings or your quadriceps, but they're finding a balance between action and passivity. So it's almost just like a balancing pose. You feel the weight of your ribs dropping onto earth, releasing. The weight of the hips dropping into the block, releasing. The shoulders releasing, the head and neck releasing. 
the eyes releasing, the tongue and jaw releasing. So this is our version of legs up the wall pose. If you have access to a wall, that would be even better. But I know in my own home, finding empty walls is difficult. So I'm gonna make the assumption that might be true for you as well. And just enjoy how the breath comes in really deeply in and really fully out. And you can even practice your eight count breath or maybe six counts is more, is, feels more comfortable to you. And you let that breath be like, as if you were laying by the ocean. And what you were listening to was the tide coming in over little pebbles. And you watch the tide go out on the in-breath and in on the out-breath. You feel the lengthening of the spine on the in-breath and the gentle shortening of the spine on the out-breath. And imagine that you are part of that ocean, that bigger ocean. So just like we began, it's now the ocean represents how you connect through your breath to things outside of you and how things outside of you also connect to you with the breath, that permeability of your whole body that we can gather those beautiful, healthy elements from outside of us as well as we can send them out. So you become part of the, this network of healing, even just in your own yoga practice. And if that's too much for your legs now, you can bring the soles of your feet together and just give you a little foot massage. I'm actually gonna leave you here and ask you to take a few minutes on your back in Shavasana. So obviously you're gonna take that little block that's out underneath your sacrum, and drop your feet to the floor, lift that out, take your legs down, let your feet fall out to the side. If you're cool, please cover at least your chest so that the body can rest let the hands drop out to the side and take as much time as you need to absorb that amazing healing practice that unites us body, mind, and spirit to self and everything else. Namaste.